All right, let's do some subtracting of polynomials this time instead of adding. We did a few of them, okay? We got pretty far yesterday, considering. So, uh, I tell you what, I'm gonna redo number four just because we don't have a lot to do today. Guys, I'm talking now, it's my turn. So everybody turn around, pay attention, take some notes. What? Right out of pass. All right, let's write, let's do uh, example four again. That's your pass. Couldn't make it a little bigger than that? Nope, that's definitely smaller than average. All right, here we go. All right, we did this yesterday, but we'll do it again just to um, reinforce it. Some of you weren't here, so we'll do it for you guys too. It's 2x squared y minus 2x cubed y minus 3. I just said, just said. But thanks for playing along. All right, here we go. So we talked yesterday about the first uh, group of numbers right here, that first polynomial, it's in parentheses. Really, there's no reason for those parentheses there. We're going to be doing stuff pretty soon where we're going to multiply polynomials, and the parentheses are super important, okay? And they are important on half of this problem. They're really not important on the first part because nothing is being multiplied by it. Um, there's no negative in front of it. So really, there's no need for that parentheses. But they put it on there, so I put it on there. There's absolutely a need for the second one. Why is there a need for the second one and not the first one? Right, but what's in front of it? The negative, and you do, right, you gotta subtract everything. And just like um, Nico said, is distributive property. So you gotta take that negative and you gotta multiply it by this one, and you gotta multiply it by that one. What that basically does is just change the sign of it. That's all it does. So this, the sign of this little monomial right here is positive, but we're gonna subtract it so it's gonna become minus. This one is minus, what does that negative do to that minus? it makes it a positive. So really, all we're going to do is just rewrite everything. Probably takes longer just rewriting this stuff than actually doing the subtraction part. All right? so we actually do the subtraction. We put minus 2x cubed y, and then here's the common mistake, okay? If you want to see the common mistake that people make is a lot of people will just write down minus 3x squared y because they forget to distribute it. Most of the time, students put the minus in front of the first one because it's right there, you know, but they forget that second one. So that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to forget that one, all right? So it's minus a negative, which is plus. So that is the key to that problem. That's the mistake that I've seen students make throughout the years. All right, now it's pretty easy. Now you, we did our subtraction. Now it's just addition, and maybe there is a little subtraction here. Let's do the first one, 8x cubed y. Let's see if, the, are there any other terms that have an x cubed and a y in it? Does that one? Nope. Does that one? Yes, that's x cubed y. So I've got eight of these minus two of these. What does that give me? Six of them. So it's 6x cubed y. So I'm done with that one, and I'm done with that one. Let's look at the other two. Are they like terms? Yeah, x squared y, x squared y. Sure enough, let's add them up, two and three. Five, five x squared y. These are not like terms, because this one has an x cubed. This one has an x squared. That is enough, that's enough to make them different terms. They're not exactly the same. Again, the numbers out in front, which are called what? Coefficients, they can be different, all right? All that number does is just tell you how many of these that you have. All right, I got eight of these, I got two of these. If I take two away from eight, I get six of these. Everybody got it? All right, that was yesterday. Let's do the next one. The next one's really not much different. But it's different numbers. And it's a little bit longer. And they don't use X and Y. I like using X and Y, but I'll use what they use. They use R and T in this one. So write this down. This is R squared T squared minus, then there's three different things in this next parentheses instead of two. So this is RT squared. This one's minus four R squared T squared. And this is plus, this one is R cubed T squared. So there's gonna be something different here, something a little bit different than we're used to. 
just so I don't have to rewrite everything over again, I'm going to do something kind of a little tricky right here. All right, watch this. I'm going to get rid of this parentheses. You don't do this. You can write them again. But I, since I got this computer program, I can do this. So I'm distributing the negative through there. So that makes this negative 8RT squared. What does it make this one? It makes it positive. And it, what, is, what does it make this one? That makes that negative. All right, that was a little faster than just rewriting everything. And we don't need this parentheses. We don't need this parentheses. Now, if there was a number out in front of that parentheses, then you'd have to distribute that number through. All right, but there's not, so we don't. All right, let's go through. Let's find our like terms. Let's just take the first one, RT squared. Are there any other RT squareds? This one right there, the 8. Is there any more? No, that's it, just these. So it's 3 minus 8. What's 3 minus 8? It's negative 5. And then it's RT squared. Since there's a bunch of things here, I like to mark out the ones that I'm done with. Okay, I think that's a good thing to do. Let's look at the next one. I got four, what? R squared T squared. So I'd look for any other R squared T squared. Yep, got one right there. Is that one? Nope, it's just this one and this one. So we just look to see the numbers in front. Positive four, positive four, add them up. What do you get? Positive eight. And then you just keep the term the same. R squared T squared. We're done with that one. We got one more left. There's nothing else to add it to. Can I add this to any of these? No. no, so I just write it down. I mean, technically it is being added, but we're not combining them. I should have said that. All right, and there you go. That's your answer. Crazy looking weird answer, but when you deal with polynomials, you'll get some of these big, long, crazy looking answers, all right? But it's not hard to do. I think the math was pretty easy on that, don't you? And uh, let's do the vertical one, I guess. The vertical one can be a little bit tricky. So we're taking that same problem, that same first problem that we did, this one right there, the 8, the eight cube y one, but we're going to do it vertically. I would not normally do it like this, but like I said yesterday, sometimes it is easier to do it vertically. So let's take a look. I'm going to take that same example, but I'm going to subtract them vertically. So it's 8x cubed y plus 2x squared y. Now here's where you got to be careful. Minus, I'm going to put this in parentheses, because that minus does affect the parentheses. So I put it in parentheses. I got x cubed y, and then I got minus 3x squared y. Okay, if you look at these numbers, it's the same exact numbers as this one right here. So we're doing the same exact problem, and you say, why are we doing the same exact problem? We already did it once. Actually, we did it twice, because we did it yesterday. But we're doing it vertically this time. So again, if it makes it however you want to do it, I'm going to get rid of this parentheses, get rid of this parentheses. There's 8 minus, but this is minus minus. So what's that going to give you? It's going to give you plus. So now I can just subtract or add vertically, whatever the case is. So I've got eight of these minus two of these, that gives us six of them, x cubed y. And then I've already done my subtraction. I already, already took, changed that to a plus. And I, so I just add these up. Two and three is five, and it's x squared y. All right, again, it's the same thing that we did on example 4a, but we did it vertically. And you'll see that in the book. I looked at the problems that you have to do in the book. They do throw a few in there that are vertical, all right? Um, if they give it to you horizontally, to me, I just think it's kind of a waste of time to take it and make it vertical. But you could if you wanted to. I just think it's, I guess it's too much time. I don't know. All right, we got one more to do. This one kind of combines some distributive property with addition and subtraction, all right? So this is the last one. Well, we haven't really done distributed property except for the negative. We're actually going to put an actual number in front of the parentheses this time. Okay, So we have done distributed property, but just with the negative. This time, we're going to throw a number out in front. So here it goes. So it's 3. It's 2x squared plus 4x minus 7. And then minus 2 parentheses, 3x squared minus 4x minus 5. Okay? All right, that's what you got to do. 
So what do you think? Does that parentheses, is that first parentheses necessary? Remember on the other problem I said it's really not necessary? Yeah, but this time it absolutely is necessary because there is a number that's being multiplied by it. So I absolutely need that parentheses there. So we are going to take that and we're going distribute, to distribute it. I'm not going to put all the little lines there, but you know what distributive is now, don't you? It's three times all of these. So here we go. We're going to multiply this first one by three. So what do we get? Six x squared plus three times four is 12 x and then minus 21. All right, so we just, just basic distributive property. This one we're gonna distribute, but we got a negative. So you gotta be careful. Anytime you see a negative, you gotta be careful because again, through my many years of teaching, um, students tend to forget that negative. All right, so here we go. It's negative two times three X, which is what? Negative six X squared. It's a negative times a negative, which is gonna be positive. Again, right there, I can't stress it enough. You got to make sure that you multiply the negatives and positives and all that kind of stuff and you know what it is. So negative times negative is positive, so make that a plus. And then it's just 2 times 4, which is 8, and then x. Another negative, negative. Negative 2, negative 5, that's again positive, and it's just a plain old 10. Everybody get that part of it? Yeah, that's not too hard, is it? All right, so what do we do now? Add like terms, right? So let's just start with the first one. Normally when we have something like this, I mean the first one does is the highest power, it's the highest degree, but normally we start with the highest degree one, all right? And most of the time it will be there, but sometimes it's not. But I start with the highest degree one, so that's the x squared. So let's add anything else that's got an x squared in it. So that's x squared, that's x squared. But look what happens. Six minus six is what? Zero, zero x squared. What's zero x squared? It's just zero. All right, so I don't even need to put anything down, right? Because I'm adding or subtracting zero. So I don't even need to do that. So you could just say they do what? Cancel each other out, okay? And it's fine. I don't mind if you say that. But I want you to make sure you understand why they cancel out. They don't just disappear. They add up to zero, all right? All right, let's keep going. What's the next highest power? Do we do the numbers or do we do the x's? Do the x's because that's the highest degree that's left over. So let's do the x's. I got a positive 12, I got positive 8, and that gives me positive 20x. All right, so I'm done with that one. All right, one more. I got negative 21 plus 10, that's negative 11. Make sure you put the negative out there in front. Can you do anything with those two? Nope, they're not like terms. Just leave it like that, and that's your answer. If you wanted to do it in a different order, you could, technically wouldn't be wrong. I don't know why you would want to do this. But if you did like that, I'd give that to you, it's fine. But you need to get used to always putting it in descending order, the highest power first all the way down, okay? So this is okay, this is much better. Make sense? All right. Oh, when do we get out of here? Is it 10 till, 45? <laughs> got 17 minutes. Man, I hate to keep you on your own for 17 minutes. What? Go ahead. We're finished, so go ahead. Um, all right, well, we'll see how you do. I'll give you a, an assignment. So I want you to use the rest of the time to work on this assignment. This is not just playing around time. It's not go to sleep time. All right, for some of you it is. Some of you got your heads down, even though I've told you the last couple days. So here we go. We got <laughs> section 5-2. I'll write everything down. So it's pages, what, 287, 288, number 17 to 39. And again, I'm just having you do the odds. Isn't that nice of me? Again, I'm going to reiterate, we talked about it before, but it just seems like I need to repeat things a million times, which is fine. I'll repeat it. Um, these are all odds. So you should do this problem. Everybody look. Let's say this, this was one of your homework problems, and you got the answer and you circled it, okay? You might be confident that you got it right, but what I would do, this is exactly what I would do. If I was a student today, even with the knowledge that I have of 30-some years teaching math, I would still flip back to the back of the book, look at it, Okay, and see if I got the answer right. All right, so make sure you do that. And it's on the digital too, right? If you have the digital version, um, you, uh, you can go to the back. I'll show you here in a second.